Hey boys and girls, we're here for another super exciting Outrageous Toy Review. Today we have a very special episode. We're here with Mike Matei from Cinemassacre. So Mike, uh, He-Man was a cartoon from the 80s. Can yes, you tell me about your favorite He-Man figure? My favorite He-Man figure. Wow, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big question there. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, you, you can't beat Skeletor, you can't beat He-Man, all the, all the big characters, but personally, the one I remember um, from being a kid was an experience that I had uh, because, you know, when you're a little kid, you don't know what to call things. You're just like a little three-year-old, four-year-old kid. You don't know that this guy's name is Merman because it's like, oh, he just, he looks like a fish or something, right? Well, this guy here, uh, his actual name is, of course, Mechanek, but when I was a little kid, I used to call this guy garbage can neck because his neck looks kind of like a garbage can or the old type of garbage can that they used to have back in the uh, 1980s. So what's with that crazy guy over there with the gears? Let's look at him. Uh, the crazy guy with the gears. This is uh, Roboto. He was one of my favorite um, He-Man figures. I always thought he was so cool because he was clear. And you, you can see the inside of his um, body there. The gears actually turn, so you can see inside of him. And I still think that this is an awesome figure. His act his mouth goes up and down, which is kind of cool. It's just a fun figure because it actually does something. Like, a lot of these guys don't really do anything. Um, for example, this guy. What does he do? Nothing. Whiplash. I guess his tail is He's got, like, to... a crazy tail. He's got a crazy tail, That's but he doesn't bad. really do anything. Um, Zodak. He doesn't really do anything. Like, literally, this guy does nothing, you know? So that's why Roboto is cool, because he actually did a little something. Another guy that does something uh, was Triclops. He doesn't do much, but um, his you could turn his uh, head, and he would see... It was like sort of like his different moods. Um, the blue eye was, like, you know, normal. And then he is not happy, you know? And then... Another guy that's like that, do I have him here, is Many Faces. Many Faces would go from robot to, that's his normal face, and then some kind of like monster, like Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, they all did a little something. Well, not all of them. Zodak doesn't. Uh, here, um, Tila. Tila doesn't do much, but she was cool. That was, uh, you know, Man-at-Arms' daughter. But this guy was cool because he did that. You could spin him around, and he, he made himself sort of into a tornado, which is cool. Buzz Off was a good guy. This was my sister's uh, favorite dude. These are probably the stupidest, but possibly my favorite uh, He-Man figures right here. You ever hear of a pet rock? Well, this right here is the dumbest toy you will ever see, because it's a, it's a rock. Who wants this as a toy? Nobody wants to have that, but I have it. And you know what it does? It's like a transformer. It turns into Stone Dar and Rock On from He-Man. They're very stupid toys. Um, but if you like He-Man, you have to have them. And who else do we have? Oh, wait. I gotta mention this. I gotta mention this. This is Stinkor. He is a skunk. And he will try to kill He-Man with his <laughs> with his skunk like abilities um oh got to got to mention moss man now there's nothing more terrifying in the world than moss i mean look at this it's like a chia pet look at his face there's something wrong with that guy you don't want to you don't want to mess with that guy is it fuzzy when He's you at, touch it you, you want to touch it touch yeah, it yeah let me touch you it you want to touch my moss man i'll touch your moss man <laughs> That's well, great. How's my Moss Man feel? <laughs> like a golf course. <laughs> they had different versions of Skeletor. Battle, bat, like Battle Wound or Battle Armor Skeletor. And as you can see, like normally Skeletor would be um, like this or something. And then he would get in a fight with He-Man and... I don't know. Not working too well anymore. But anyway, it's supposed to go, go to there. And you can see his like Battle Wounds on the front there. This is Hordak. Hordak was Shira's um, enemy. He was the big. He was like Sh Hordak was the Skeletor of Shira, but came into it, I believe, on the He-Man uh, Christmas special, which is where 
I believe Shira was introduced. So this is uh, this is Hordak, the evil Shira villain right there. Let's not forget the most terrifying He-Man villain of all time, Spike Orr, because he has spikes. Yeah, that's Spike Orr, and not much to say about him other than he's very silly. And actually. I'm, I'm making a lot of fun of these characters, but one that I actually really do think is cool, this might be my favorite guy, is uh, Webstore. He's basically like a spider, spider and uh, he had this grappling hook, which is all tangled up right now. Um, I don't want to take the time to unhook it. It actually works. It's a working like grappling hook, and he's a cool-looking um, figure um, in comparison to a lot of these other goofy jokers over here. He actually looks pretty cool. I like, I like him a lot. He actually looks a little bit menacing. Hey, here you go. Got... Everybody's favorite right here, it's Ram Man. And you know why people like Ram Man? Well, for two reasons. Because one thing, he does this, boing! But the other reason is because of how he talked on the show. He would go, duh, he man, duh! And who doesn't like a character that talks like that? People like those kind of dumb characters. It sounds kind of like a, um, a Hanna-Barbera, like Huckleberry Hound type of thing. Like, duh! Um... You know, I have to be honest, I was a little too um, young to remember He-Man. Yeah. Like, I couldn't even tell you, like, who the bad guys are, who the good guys are here. Yeah. Like, I can tell you, I can tell you Like, who's like, it. who's, like, the most important, like, three or four guys in the show, other all than He-Man and Skeletor? All my, all my really, really important uh, He-Man figures are out in the other room, because, I don't know, uh, we do a show called uh, James and Mike Mondays, and when we shoot at my house... Um, in the background, um, I purposely have my background set up as a tribute to the 1980s. I've got Transformers out there, I've got He-Man out there, I've got Thundercats out there, I've got real Ghostbusters, um, Voltron, and the figures that I have out there are all the main characters. And for He-Man, I have, of course, He-Man, Skeletor, Orko, Man-at-Arms, those are the figures that I have out there because those are the main characters of the show. So I'm trying to represent the 1980s out there because that's what the show is all about. It's about the past. Uh, it's about the 1980s and early 1990s. I just said that I had Man-at-Arms out front, but I lied. I, I'm sorry, kids. I lied to you. <laughs> uh, Man-at-Arms is right here. And this was, um, he was like the panthro of the show. He was the, the perceptor or ratchet of He-Man. So he was very important. Uh, he would make all the vehicles and do that kind of thing. Great character. Doesn't do much, you know, he's just got a club, but uh, he, he was uh, he was important. But we should definitely take a look at the main He-Man figures in the other room. So let's go check them out. Let's do it. So out here we have my main He-Man figures. First of all, you have Castle Skull, which is the play set from He-Man. Uh, they had other play sets. There was Eternia, there was Snake Mountain, but Castle Skull was the main uh, play set from He-Man. And, you know, I don't want to... People get a little confused because Eternia was actually where He-Man lived. Uh, Prince Adam lived... He -Man, you know, it's like it's like the Superman thing. You know, you, uh, Clark Kent turns into Superman. Prince Adam turns into He-Man. Prince Adam lived in Eternia. Castle Grayskull, the sorceress, lived there. But Castle Grayskull... You know He-Man? He's Prince Adam. He turns into... He pulls out the sword and he says, I have the power! But where does the power come from? It comes from Castle Grayskull. All the power of Grayskull comes into He-Man, the master of the universe, right there. One of the most classic action figures of all time. Um, he, you know, you had um, all the Transformers that came later, all the Thundercats, but this was early 80s. R really, the He-Man figures, this is what started all this stuff. I mean, you got you love Ninja Turtles, you love um, Thundercats, you love uh, Transformers, all this stuff. But if you didn't have He-Man that started this whole commercialism craze of the 1980s, this was what started it all right here. And this figure is the main figure. And, of course, you have Battle Cat, his trusted, his trusted steed. I was playing with He-Man figures up until I'd say about 1983, 1984, and then the thing that came was uh, Transformers uh, came a little bit, and then I started to get into that. That this was like 84, 85, something like that, maybe 86, and then then the whole Transformer, uh, then the whole Thundercats thing happened. 
I think Voltron happened, um, that was a little bit earlier. That was more, like, right after He-Man. I think Voltron was, like, 94, and then this is all, like, later. This is, like, late 80s. Um, anyway, let, let's finish up here, though. Gotta talk about Skeletor. This was the main Skeletor that everybody pretty much had. Um, let me, let me tell you something that you guys might not know, and I think that this is the coolest thing, um, that a lot of people don't know about, and you, you need to learn about this right now. So Skeletor, you see his sword? You see the slit on the back of his sword? Let me ask you, do you know what the slit is for? I don't. You, he doesn't know. Well, let me explain it to you. If you take Skeletor's sword, and then you take He-Man's sword, what do you have there? You have the male end that goes into the female end, and if you stick them together, boys and girls, how do you open Castle Grayskull? Skeletor, Skeletor's whole goal in life is to get into Castle Grayskull, because that's where all the power of the universe is. And how is he going to do that? By sticking his male and female end into the hole, twisting it, and voila, the door opens. I bet you didn't know that. The swords are the key to Castle Grayskull. So you learned a little something there. Last thing I gotta show you is the goofball comedy character on the show. This was the comic relief. This was Orko. You would put the ripcord in the side and pull it, and he he will actually spin around. But I don't uh, I don't know where it is right now. This is Evelyn. I didn't want to leave her out. Evelyn is Skeletor's woman, and Skeletor. Skeletor's blue and she's yellow and Skeletor likes his uh, yellow women. That's all I'm gonna say Anyway, she uh, she's not supposed to go up here. I have her up here because I actually don't own the sorceress She's a little bit more rare and I still uh, I'm still on the hunt to this day So if anybody's got a sorceress that they want to send me send me an email because I'm still looking for the sorceress I hope you enjoyed my look at he-man and the masters of the universe Action figure set boys and girls. I know this may be a little bit um out of your generation, but they've made a lot of remakes over the years. There's been um, a, a TV show that came on later. There was um, a show in the like 2000, 2002 on Cartoon Network that you may remember. Um, anyway, I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed. This was another super exciting, outrageous toy review. Check back for more videos.